Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the TRN MT1. Now this one came out a little while ago. It took me a while to get this one in the mail. I purchased this one on TRN's official store and I paid a lot more than $760. I was probably around this $949-ish price. So I bought it early. It dropped uh, pretty quickly after it was released, but mine was already in the mail. So I got it for $9, everyone else got it probably for $5. So it's actually quite nice, crystal clear. This is the crystal clear version. It comes in a mint version, um, but the clear version is actually quite nice. You can, it is a 1DD, and if we get this thing to focus, you can actually see it poking in right there. So quite nice. These are nice HCK tips. They were on sale on a flash sale, so they're about a dollar a pair, and I'll get into those tips and why. And this cable is a pure silver cable. The original cable is actually this black TRN cable. I think it looks a little better clear and silver, so we have a silver. So let's uh, get into it. So the most important thing, though, TRN MT1, it's priced about $9, so it's a little less than the KS1 and a lot less than the DQ6. And I put it sort of in between the two because I don't think generally it doesn't do a basic set better than the KS1, and it doesn't do a general budget set, you know, when you take into account, you know, all three base, mids, and treble, resolution, detail. I don't think it it quite beats a DQ6 either. EDX is a, is a closer one, but for me, the MT1 sort of fits in between these two. Um, and for me, if I want a basic set, I'll probably do the KS1. If I want something with a little more detail, a DQ6. So there's nothing really wrong with the MT1. It's just if you have both of the other two, you don't necessarily need the, NT1, the MT1. But the MT1 is sort of a, a nice compromise between the two. So um, there's, it's just a really nice set. But um, do consider if you already have the other two, you may not need the third. Or if you only want to buy one, the MT1 is actually a sort of compromise between the two, so not, not too bad. So as I mentioned, tips make a uh, huge difference on this guy because it's a basic set. And the TRN tips themselves are has a narrower borehole than these, so it, it tends to be a little more boomy than it should be. My Asla Sedna the Ear Fit tips are wider than these tips, so it sort of dried out the mids, made them a little too sharp, a little too open. So these nice HCK, this hole ended up just being in between the two, so it was a nice middle ground for me. So, But if you have the MT1, definitely play with the tips. That's the biggest thing to controlling bass on this set is you know, picking the right tips so your bass is trying to avoid that boomy, dark uh, bass because there's a lot there, and it's quite boomy and a little loose. So anything that you can do to add some control to it is what you really want to do. So second thing, higher volume tends to work better on this set. It's got this really relaxed sound to it, but the, the whole upper end is a little more relaxed than it than I preferred. So at lower volumes, I ended up trying to EQ it, but you're better off just raising the volume a little bit be, a little bit more than you normally would, and it ends up giving you a little more energy, and you go from something not quite as relaxed and non-fatiguing to something that you know brings out the upper end a little more than it is at lower at the lower volumes because it's just it's quite easy to lose the whole upper range at lower volumes so higher volume really works for me on this set so what does it sound like it's got this u shape slightly warm sound but that bottom of the u is maybe a bit too low it's got these recessed mids and so i'm trying to these first two tips are really trying to help that situation because the bass is boomy so it's it can dominate a little bit the mids are recessed a little bit, so they so tend to fade away at lower volumes. So, you know, I'm trying to help that situation add a little help to the mids. That's kind of what I was going for. But uh, they're definitely, if you're used to TRNs, then you'll sort of understand how they do recessed mids. It's not all that uncommon, especially if you're a V90 fan. They had something similar, just I think it's a, this is a little more than that. So on the bass side, it is a big dynamic driver quantity of bass. Um, not, it's not KS1 quantity, but it's pretty close. And on the upper, on the upper end of the bass, it's actually not too bad. It's nice and punchy, 
but that sub bass, that lower bass could get a bit loose and a bit boomy, and that's what you're going to notice. So something like the Cure's Love Song, that bass starts off kind of nice and tight, and then the drums start hitting, and you just get that boom, and uh, it's just it just needs to be a little tighter, a little more control. So tips, if you're a cable believer, go with silver cable. You know, whatever it is to add a little more bass control, that's what this set needs. On the mids, like I said, it's TRN recessed. Uh, if, you're, if you have a couple TRN sets from not necessarily VX or BA8, but something previous to that where they were more into V shapes and recessed mids, it's, it's more aligned in that. And on some of the older tracks, it actually sounds a little compressed and recessed. So that vocal image is, is a bit smaller than I would have wanted. So do choose those tips that open up your mids in the treble because that will help a little bit. And like on the DQ6, you have to dial this one in a little bit. I keep on saying tips, 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 but it's really important on this one to get the right sound. So with the stock tips, those small TRNs with a big bassy sound, it sort of sounds a bit muffled. And uh, so do do try tips that are more open to open up those mids and the upper range to make them a little more present. But at the other end of that is if something like my Asla tips were too open, you end up with a drier, sharper sound, a little more fatiguing, especially in that upper mid range. So dial it in. So it can be quite detailed in high res sources, but normal sources are going to sound a bit, bit average, um, not quite DQ6 level. So it's single DD level of detail. Um, and it's not super, I sort of went back and forth on uh, how natural it sounds. I just never really got drawn to instruments and bands on this set. It always pulled electronic sounds better. And I think part of it is just the recess mids, maybe it's the detail, but there isn't that realism to instruments that you're really looking for in that style, especially on a DD. So. This one, I will call it the fun side of natural. It, it does electronic music very well, so that's what I primarily listen to on this set. But on the treble side, that tonality is actually pretty good. The cymbals sound pretty good. It's not rolled off. It's relaxed, so you don't want to lose it in the mix. So again, keep your volume up a little bit. It doesn't have that... The cymbals don't have that cheap BA thin sound. And then on kind of the con side, the fast guitars, complex sections of music will all run together. It's not that quick to handle um, that type of music, but um, less complex pieces, it sounds great, especially the treble is actually quite a bit of detail there, but on the more complex pieces, you'll lose a lot of that detail quickly. Staging, it's great for $10, um, but on some songs, it's definitely going to fall between your ears and sound quite a bit linear. Um, it's pretty much all straight left to right. Other times you get a really nice width, especially on more modern tracks, it actually sounds quite wide and it sounds much better than a $10 set. So yeah, staging is a little bit of a mixed bag. It just depends on what your playlist looks like, whether that sounds really good or just average. So um, that's it. That's my take on the TRN MT1, a, uh, another nice under $20 set that's in line with the KS1 or the EDX or the DQ6. So. Do check that one out, and uh, thank you again for watching.